Speaking of which, how do you like Thor? Thor was great. We <laughs> loved it. We saw it twice. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah, it was uh, it was a really fun time. <clears throat> and we all speaking had of fun times. times. Speaking of fun times. Waiting for that ending. <laughs> I thought that was a segue into the show, which you were going to latch on to. Hello and welcome to our <laughs> new and an improved episode of Tudor. I hardly know her. There's nothing improved about it. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> we are no better than we were a year ago. Fuck you. <laughs> mm-hmm. You thought that we, we took that week off to say like, oh, yeah, you know, we're going we're gonna to come back stronger than ever. No. No, for the Maybe. same. We might even be wimpier and weaker than before. <laughs> um, hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> do you want to talk tutor? I guess. Sure. Let's talk tutor. After Emily yawns. I had wine. <laughs> She's so excited about this. I, I almost <laughs> said I had wine for dinner. I had more than wine for dinner, but I had wine with dinner. So... Wine for dinner either sounds like a really bad band name or a really <laughs> pretentious book name. It's both. But they're both like, they both have audiences of like 10 people. Mm -hmm. So nobody knows that they're both the same thing. Much like us. I'm kidding. No, we've got 20 people. <laughs> yeah. No, we've got a cool fan base. I love them. Thanks all. You guys are cool. Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to give a shout out. Hold on. Hold on. Shout out's coming. Just a second. Shout Shout. Before Emily gets to an actual out. shout out, let me give a generic one to everyone who's who's been uh, interacting with mm -hmm. us. Thank thanks for uh, all the iTunes reviews. Those are really cool. Like th those kind of blew up really quick, and yeah. I loved it. Um. So. So keep that coming. Give give us more iTunes reviews. Tell us how you like how much you like us. Hold on, I think it was. When it comes to the show, tell us what you want, what you really, really want. No, tell well, me. Well, I'll you tell want. you what you really, really want. What you really, really want? Tell me what I want. What I really, really want. Um, uh, hold on, I'm really struggling here, guys. It's that wine for dinner. Oh, it's Abby Gillingham. She's in England, so very, very sorry if I butchered that. Um, but she contacted me with a question the other day. Asking if it was true that Anne Boleyn didn't know how to spell her last name. And the thing about spelling in that time period was that it wasn't all uniform. So there was no Webster's Dictionary. And the Boleyn name was spelled a couple different ways. B-U-L-L-E-N, B-U-L-I-N, B-O-L-I-N, and then B-O-L-E-Y-N is actually the modern spelling of it. So why, why why were there so many different versions or why why was it was okay no, to misspell no or standard. just not give a shit? <laughs> well, they did give a shit, but it wasn't standard. So it's like why Catherine of Aragon sometimes it's spelled with a C, sometimes it's spelled with a K. It didn't really matter how it was spelled; it was just how it was pronounced. No wonder they did the monogram towels. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was her question, and I answered her. It reminds me of how I don't know how to pronounce my own last name. <laughs> That's okay. I haven't been able to say it's Kaiser, it right? Is it Kaiser or K or Kaiser? My mom always said Kaiser. S as in Sam. Your mom, but, but wait, a lot of people say Kaiser around me, and then it just kind of throws me off. So I just assume that what they're saying is right because they know better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were joking at first about not knowing your last name. I I go back and forth. I'll so say it one way one day and then another the I other day. I take your dad's. Your dad, like, just go with what the males are doing because they're the ones who didn't marry into the name right so it'd be like yeah our buddy it, his last name is McElaney and it's got some fucked up spelling <laughs> but like if Morgan decides that she doesn't want to try and pronounce that and she says oh it's M M McElhenney like she's the wrong one she married into it Mac's the right one so Gare I'd go with what your dad says your last name is how does he pronounce it I don't think I ever asked him <laughs> Dad, you're gonna go to him almost 30 years old. How do you pronounce her last name? <laughs> He'd probably just shake his head and walk away. Hey, what if. No, okay, wait, I have an idea. I have a plan. Because the name thing is always so awkward. Like, I know that if I don't know someone's name, what I do is I introduce them to my husband. And I go, This is my husband, Jeff. 
And then the other person is like, oh, hi, my name's Anna Banana, right? So what we do for you is give me your dad's phone number. I'll call him and I'll butcher your last name. And then he'll correct me. And then I'll be like, okay, thanks, bye. And then I'll call my you. Dad, my dad would not give a shit. He'd just be like, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Cut sure. to you, Garrett. I'm right. Garrett Kosser. <laughs> Maybe my dad doesn't even know how to say her own last name. <laughs> Garrett's last name is really Cusser. It's it's one of those uh, what is it? Uh, it's one of those mistakes passed down from grandfather to, <laughs> to son to to his son. Um. Okay, that was names. That was okay. So thanks, Abby Gillingham, for your question. Um. And keep asking us questions because I'll probably start answering them on the podcast because I just really like it. Um, oh, and we got a fun fact from a fan. Rodrigo Borgia was the bishop who he was the the fucked up Borgia Pope from our last episode. He was the bishop who married Catherine of Aragon's parents. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. I mean, bishop to queen <laughs> seven. <laughs> no. Damn it. <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> Do you guys want to talk about this week's episode? Yeah, yes. we haven't gotten there yet, have we? No. We're going to talk about Tudor art and music. Mm. So um, I am expecting a lot of jokes based on some of these. <laughs> so... Originally, I was going to do Tudor art, but then I realized, like, unfortunately, the only way for me to really study Tudor art and, like, give a, f- a, like, episode's worth of information is if I become an art historian. Sorry, guys, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so it's half Tudor art and half Tudor music because there's a lot more info about the music in that time period. Henry wrote everything. Henry wrote everything. He originally wrote Freebird. <laughs> <laughs> It's about uh, his cod piece. <laughs> no, green. No, he sorry. just wants to free the bird. <laughs> that sweet soul at the end was great with it. Uh, he played it on the loot. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jethro uh. Tull. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start with some Tudor art. Um, in that period, art consisted of not just drawings and uh, and paintings, but also architecture, Jewelry, metalwork, and tapestries. Um, And we're mostly going to talk about portraiture and tapestries. But I did want to talk a little bit about metalwork a teeny, tiny, tiny bit. Um, They're the only confirmed, undisputed image of Anne Boleyn is actually a coin, a medal from when she was um, crowned. And it's called the Most Happy Medal because that was her motto. (coughs) I'm the most happy. You know, amusing and yeah. respectful. You know, until until fifteen thirty six. Also, I tweeted this out this week, but guys, if you're ever feeling like shit about your life, it will never be as bad as Anne Boleyn's life in fifteen thirty six. So just remember that to keep yourself going. Um, but that's a really awful <laughs> image. Like it, it's just not good. Garrett, I'm gonna send it to you right now so you can see. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, it's not awful. It's metal work. It's not exactly easy to do. Um, but that's the only undisputed image of her because Henry VIII, um, when he broke up with his girlfriend, he went Taylor Swift. And do you want to see this, Jeff? You have to come <laughs> over here. Henry VIII went Taylor Henry S- really is a Taylor mm-hmm. Swift of his time, he isn't really he? He really is. He went Taylor Swift and like burned everything of his ex wives. So, I mean, it's metal work. Sorry. Remember. Henry can't come to court right now because he's dead. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. How many Taylor Swift jokes can we make about Henry VIII? Holy hell. They did not do Anne any favors. No, no, they didn't. It's metal, (laughs) though. Like, it's not exactly easy to work with. Yeah, her her honkers. Um, Have you ever seen a penny before? But, you guys, look at her boobs in that. Like you Look at her s- nose. That's what I. It serious, looks like. It, so it looks like one eye is in the right place. Um, <laughs> her nose looks like huge Dude, and cartoonish and it's comical. It looks years like old. her other eye is drooping down her cheek. 
Dude, it's 500 years old. You have to give a you little bit of You say that, but leeway. whenever we get a time machine, we go back then. She's going to look just like that. <laughs> she looks like fucking Igor. Yeah. Henry, your your wife is very beautiful. <laughs> Man, he really fell off that horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is going to be a fun episode. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Um, I want to start. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Henry, your wife. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I want to start with some of the artists, and I will let you guys know that I am a fucking idiot. Because, uh-huh. okay, so two of the artists that were used a lot in that court were Nicholas Hillard and Lavina Tierline. Um, and she was a woman, which is pretty fucking baller. And then Hans Holbein, the younger. So whenever I read books, I heard about Hans Holbein because so many royal portraits were done. But I read. <laughs> so first of all, I'm just a fucking dumbass. Like, I'm so stupid. I thought that there was a Hans Holbein, like, father. <laughs> And then Hans Holbein Child, who were both painters in the Tudor court. And in fact, I'm just fucking stupid. And it is one guy. (laughs) (laughs) It is Hans Holbein the Younger. And he did have a father named Hans Holbein who was a painter, but he had nothing to do with the Tudor court. (laughs) So I'm fucking dumb. Really glad I learned that today. Um, so art was a really big deal in the Tudor court. It, before Henry, uh, decided the Pope was bullshit, it was not you, it was used in, uh, tons of religious stuff. Like it was vital for telling stories uh, from the Bible because people couldn't read the Bible and also because people couldn't read. They so, liked the picture books more. It was a picture book. So, <laughs> um, and then imagery in images in these were really important, um, so there was a ton of symbolism. There was a ton of symbology. Um, and like pre-Henry Reformation, there was all this religious iconography. But afterwards, it was less about religion and more about like might and wisdom and all that shit. So the royal just sat for the portrait and was like, okay, make me look smart. And they're like, okay, a snake equals wisdom. So you're going to be holding a snake in your hands. And that's what they did. Hold the snake. For I wonder. Three hours. I wonder if anything in history or or stuff from the Bible ever got got perverted and 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 the message or or the original text changed because they had to translate it over to pictures and then that got misinterpreted into something else, which made it its way into future like versions of like a history book or the bible i mean that was henry's whole argument for his ability to divorce catherine was because he claimed that somebody had mistranslated the bible passage originally that said um the bible passage said if you take your brother's wife you will be without children and he claims that it was mistranslated and it said you will be without sons so that's been a question for the ages, Gare. Um, huh. Yeah. That's, huh. Yeah, he's like, you know, I think I'm smarter than all these people. That's the wrong word. Um, so portraits were very important in Henry's time period. Like, they were around before Henry VIII, obviously, but Henry VIII was a huge narcissist. And so he's <laughs> no. like... You get a portrait, you get a portrait, everybody gets a portrait. So the way this worked was Oh, man, was, was he ever trying to do selfie, selfies with them? I, there was a self-portrait, but not of Henry. It was somebody Aww. who gave... It was Nicholas uh, Hillard who gave Elizabeth the first a self-portrait. They used the filters on it? He used a selfie. Yeah, he used the, the dog one. <laughs> that That's not the guy that did those really weird self-portraits, was it? That was Picasso. <laughs> no, there was, y- you know, that meme that went around where like they would take rap lyrics, but like translate them into like old English or something no. <laughs> <laughs> that that got the guy in that photo. He did a whole series of stuff like that of himself. Just really weird. 
Oh man, I got I got to find his name. But continue. I mean, I really want to know when you find out. Okay, so um, God, what was the name of that meme? I don't know, Garrett. Check knowyourmeme.com. Oh, dis. Uh, like, we can hear you typing, and it sounds like the most stereotypical, like, movie hacker moment. <laughs> Everyone go to uh, hackertyper.com. You'll thank me later. <laughs> that is a fun website. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. Joseph Ducrow. Joseph Ducrow? Sounds like a movie villain. It really does. It sounds like a Nicolas Cage. Joseph Ducrow. Come on, yeah. internet. Well, you're not working. Okay. Yeah, I did like a self-portrait of him yawning and other I'm silly back, stuff. Okay, I'm going to go back to this art. Cause oh, my God. This is beautiful. Oh, send it to me. Okay, I'm sending it in Skype, though. Oh, I can't get up. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Jeff. I mean, that... that <laughs> it's amazing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know that guy. You, you got to click the link though, because it'll take you to Where the actual that? picture. Oh yeah. Is wait, is that the guy who takes old portraits and puts like, like lyrics, old timey lyrics to like milk? My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard and shit. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. Okay. Yes. Henry VIII did okay. that too. <laughs> he brought all the milkshakes to the yard. <laughs> My codpiece brings all the girls to the yard, and they're like, "It's better than yours, damn right." Okay. You want to get beheaded? I. I think that's called this, castration. <laughs> this painting of him going shh, like I want that on my wall. I know what I'm getting you for Christmas. Christmas gift. Oh. Yeah. Um, anyway, we just completely derailed. Back to the show. That's okay. It's, it's not like we've ever heard a complaint about that. It was that. art. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, we can cut that out. It was out. relevant. No, keep it in. It was funny. Okay. Um, so owning a portrait was a huge deal in those days. It wasn't like a status symbol because the way portraits were made was like Henry VIII was a huge narcissist, but he didn't have time to be sitting for all these portraits. So he would sit for a portrait once and then a um, pattern was made for his face, and the pattern would get disseminated across the globe. And people would hmm. then, that's why you see them, that, the portraits that look so similar, but also the ones that look terrible. It's not because those were good artists. It's, it's like a weird... I'd like to imagine that it was distributed by one of those, like, how to draw Henry VIII books. It really was. <laughs> and other members of the First, Tudor court. Draw a circle. S like, now add some red. Circle. <laughs> yeah, it was like, uh, draw a cloud. It's like one of those weird games. Was it the, the, the telephone game? Yeah. It's like that yeah, type of telephone drawing. Game. Yeah, it's pretty much. It's like you much. just keep trying to do a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, hold on, I got another one I'm going to... Oh, that'd be fun to do. Like, like have somebody paint a Bob Ross and then have somebody paint off of that person's thing of how they did Bob Ross and just keep going from there. So Garrett, we call it Bobception. Garrett, I just sent you another picture of Henry VIII. Okay. Um. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that um, is that you know, I was at, I was at, I took my car into the shop today and I saw an old guy or an old uh, buddy from high school and that's what he looks like. Okay, I'm gonna I'll post is that, this. Is that on, from Alice of Wonderland? It is. Uh, I'm gonna post this guy's on uh, Facebook. <sighs> and oh uh, my god, okay. like so it's like they turned an acorn upside down and then drew eyes and a mouth and a nose <laughs> on it. <laughs> so Cornelius Met Metzis. Or Macis. Never worked again. Did <laughs> <laughs> Cornelius Met. Hold on, I'm gonna. He looks like a representative of the Lollipop Guild. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Cornel Cornelius Macis was a painter, and he was uh, he was from he was a Flemish painter, and. 
uh, like just quickly scrolling through his shit like he's a he's really great at landscapes but he should never with it get within 10 feet of a paintbrush when he's trying to do a human it's because they all look Go like on. that sorry cornelius um so they would use the pattern disseminate the pattern and then you know, pass around. So Henry VIII probably didn't sit for very many. He maybe sat for th- for a handful of portraits throughout his life. Um, he should have sat a little bit longer. <laughs> this one needed a little more time than the other. He did not sit for that one. I guarantee you. <laughs> like I really don't think that. I think he like fell asleep halfway through. I think he did, and then he's like, I think I can remember what he looks like. <laughs> um. So. Da 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 da. People were really into collecting. It almost looks like one of those like pictures where if you look at it in a different way, it's a completely different image. <laughs> if you turn it sideways, it becomes a duck. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I see it. No, can't. My, my phone does the flippy thing where it just writes itself. God damn it. Continue. Um, so owning a portrait and collecting pictures, big deal. And as if you owned a owned a portrait of henry you were basically showing loyalty and i just like instantly got this picture of a guy who was like oh shit henry's upset with me and then he just like pastes pictures of henry the (laughs) eighth all over his house like inside and outside just so as many henry the eighth portraits as possible (laughs) so the artists that that actually did good work and and that henry liked and would use a lot would 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 they were they like freelancers or did he have them on retainer he had them on retainer so hans holbein the younger the only (laughs) see i was so confused because i googled hans holbein and it only showed the younger and i'm like i want the i want senior (laughs) there is no senior uh he was henry the eighth's favorite portrait uh artist and he did he do that very famous picture of him yes or portrait yes okay. so he hopped on over to england in 1526 or 1528 went back to denmark or wherever the fuck he came from sorry guys I didn't, this isn't a hans holbein episode um and then he came back in 1532 and he stayed until his death in 1543 so he he's there for a decent amount of time um sorry hans holbein was german and swiss yeah, um, the Swiss. The Swiss. So his paintings included Erasmus, who you guys, sorry, you guys probably don't know the name, but he was a very famous humanitarian in that time. Okay, hold on. Sorry, I'm I'm looking at the Hans Holbein portrait of Henry. His arms do not look proportional. The one where he's like standing with his arms on his hips, or the one where he's sitting. The one where he's got his hand, he's got one hand down to his, to his waist. And he's got one holding, I assume it's a glove. Could be like some feathers okay, and a I wallet. See. Um, remember, but, but you have to remember that that could have been proportional because of the way their clothes were. So in that mm. picture, Henry VIII is probably in his forties and he was larger, but also like his his, they wore puffy as fuck outfits. Like that's like fifty layers of clothing right there. Also, please zoom in on his shoes if you're looking, because they look like bear shoes. Look at I'm those nice calves. This is a very visual episode. I didn't think of that. <laughs> yup. <laughs> Don't worry. These will be posted to Facebook. Yeah, yeah, Wait. guys, definitely. So make sure you're saving the order. It photos looks look at. like he's. It looks like he's wearing flatbreads on his feet. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, I heard about this thing called pita. They go in your shoe, yeah. right? Oh, there's that cod piece poking out. <laughs> right. <laughs> like giant. It looks like it looks like it's a little tentacle, just like trying to peek its way out. <laughs> Like it's about to unravel, like, or, or like one of those like party things that go. Burr. Okay, but also when you're looking at this picture, <laughs> <laughs> a party favorites. Okay, but also when you're looking at this picture, look at that insane detail. Like I'm, I'm specifically zoomed in on his cod piece. Sorry, but like, <laughs> of course you are. Look at that insane detail, and this is a 500 year old painting, and like look at you can see the fur around his neck. It actually looks like fucking fur. And that embroidered, like the puffed sleeves and the embroidery, it's it's insane. 
and I can't even imagine what this looked like. This is faded, guys. This is not preserved. Did you see? Did you see that um, that video going around not too long ago about that uh, that person taking those layers off of that one painting? Yeah. And restoring it. It's yeah. So sad. I figured you would love that. I will also post a link to that. So. Wasn't that wasn't that a portrait of uh, Elizabeth? I don't think so. I'll look it up though. Um. So. Hans Holbein famously painted Erasmus, who was a very famous humanitarian. Thomas More, Cromwell, Henry VIII. Um, he very likely did paintings of Anne Boleyn, but because Henry VIII pulled a Taylor Swift and destroyed everything after the Great Purge, um, we can't find any that exist. Um, but he did work for her. He actually designed a cup engraved with a falcon and roses that she gifted to Henry VIII. Um, he also painted Jane Seymour, Edward VI. And here's an important point. He painted Anne of Cleves. So portraits of Anne of Cleves were sent from Cleves <laughs> to Henry. And Henry was like, I'm not satisfied. I trust Hans. Hans, go paint her. So Hans Gutentag hop clopped over the border. <laughs> and he um, popped back over with this really beautiful portrait of Anne of Cleves and Every portrait we see of her of Henry VIII's wives, I think she is actually the most beautiful. And this is why this is why I don't believe the Henry VIII thought she was ugly thing because if he thought Hans Holbein was flattering Anne of Cleves and trying to make her look prettier, he would have fired him or decapitated him, but he continued to use him. So it is exceptionally likely that Hans did an accurate portrait of Anne of Cleves and um, Henry just didn't like her personality. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a bit. So, um, then Henry croaked and Elizabeth, we're going to skip through the other two and get to Elizabeth because she was the one who really perfected using portraits for politics so she understood the power of of good imagery so after the defeat of the armada she had this baller armada painting done it's full of imagery of her defeat just kind of kind of just shouting hey i kicked spanish ass um so that one let's see i got a picture of it so she's wearing like the fucking most baller gown in the world with like every ribbon and pearl in the country. Um, she's got her hand on a globe on the left is on the top left is a portrait or is in the portrait is a section of ships that look like they've been abandoned. And on the right are a bunch of ships sinking and see like what actually happened to the Armada. Um, then there's a, I believe a siren, on the bottom right and um it's basically just saying hey spain sucks i rule and um that was actually around the time where she was struggling to get a, a bunch of love in her reign um but um she was kind of obsessed with getting portraits so henry the eighth loved them she was even crazier about him. She received a, a new portrait every New Year's from the painter Lavina Tierline. Um, do you guys remember a couple episodes when I talked about how Elizabeth had um, insisted that one picture be used for every other picture? No. Cricket, cricket. Okay, a couple episodes ago we talked about how Elizabeth had and when we first talked about this we i think we laughed about it we made a little bit of fun of it we talked about how elizabeth was super into herself and she ended up telling everybody just use this one picture that i really like and base everything you do off of that well we made fun of it but now that we know that um copying pictures was like the norm <laughs> it's not really funny it's it's kind of just like oh okay it's a time saver um <laughs> the henry the eighth set <laughs> so <laughs> uh tracing so it's a coloring book the only thing elizabeth did insist on that was a little bit above 
uh, a little bit over the top was that she wanted to approve of all portraits but honestly it was it was marketing if you think about it and so she needed to approve of the images especially knowing that first henry the eighth image that i showed you guys went out now, like she probably saw that isn't there a story or am i think it might be getting as confused with someone else but isn't there a story of there, there was a portrait made of henry the eighth and he disapproved of it and then that's when the final one was made of him, the one where he's standing. And that's not a story. You were watching the Tudors with me. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> is, is it true, though? I don't know. Well, see, the reason I, got, I wasn't sure if that was real or not, because I know that's, that happened in real life with um, Winston Churchill. Yes. But that's why I'm sure. Yeah, but he didn't tell him to remake it. He just, like, it w- with Winston Churchill, when he got a picture he didn't like, he burned had it. to grumpily <laughs> accept it, but then he secretly burned it. But that's why I wasn't sure about if that was what happened with Henry VIII. No, I think that was just dramatization for the show. Okay, that's what I figured. Um, okay, so I want to talk a little bit about tapestries. Tapestries? That was the joke I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> this is a castle, and, and we, we have, have many, many tapestries. <laughs> but if you are Scottish law, then I am Mickey Mouse. <laughs> How dare he? Sorry, we're quoting Indiana Jones for... I losers out there who don't watch Dr. Jones, stop listening to this podcast and go listen to Dr. Jones. Watch Dr. Watch Jones. Um, okay. I didn't know what you're talking about. That's because you're a loser. I've only seen the movies once with you guys like five years ago. <laughs> I know what we're doing when you visit. Uh, watch like the time you made me watch Jaws. You can also watch Jaws. At the same time. Indiana Jones meets Jaws. Um. Okay, so I want to talk. That's a movie I want to see. I do. I do want to talk a little bit about tapestries. So, do you guys know what a tapestry is? It's just a big. Yeah. It's almost like it's like a big. It's almost like a painting, except it's like pretty much sewn into a big. It's, it's woven. Fabric. Yeah. It's, it's it's like those quilts that your grandma makes you. Yes. Except detail. They hang it from the walls. Shit. So they're wall hangings, and they were especially important for telling stories back then. Um, and Henry the Eighth was fucking obsessed with tapestries when he died he had almost 2500 well they really tied the room together they really tied the room together um they should have wrapped him in all of his tapestries (laughs) and it would have been like a cocoon when he was buried toss him in the thames um so he has one that's really well known it's called the meeting the meeting of abraham and it's a series of 10 him shaking hands with abraham lincoln abraham lincoln (laughs) And there are zombies in the background. And this was woven over two years, from 1541 to 1543. Um, my resource says that you can find it on historic royal palaces. The link I tried to follow was broken, but it still might be somewhere on that website. So if you want to see the meeting of Abraham, check out the historic royal palaces. I'll see if I can also find a copy of it. But to talk about how obsessed Henry was with his tapestries... He once spent 1,500 pounds on a set of on just two tapestries. In those days, that was the same cost as a warship, fully outfitted. <laughs> as a what? A warship. Oh, I thought you said something else. What do you think I said? Mm, sounds like warship. I thought you said abortion. That does Whoa. not sound like worship. <laughs> the way it came over Skype, it sounded like you said it costs almost as much as an abortion. It's shmush <laughs> Uh <laughs> No. So um, they had, they didn't really have tapestries made in England in until Shakespeare, until like the Shakespearean time. What are you like? You're just like staring in a corner, smut, got with this goofy ass grin. I'm just laughing at the idea of how much he loves tapestries. It's just like, well, what a weird obsession to have. Like, what do you collect? Tapestries. You know, I bet you they Everyone's would. has got to have a hobby, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Our hobby is the tutors. The tutor's hobby was the tapestries. His was tapestries and beheading people. Yeah. You, you got to have something to entertain yourself with. <laughs> um, so, what do you like to collect? Well, I like uh, tapestries. Uh, Tokens of my dead wives. I'm sorry, <laughs> what? Monogram towels. Monogram towels. Cod pieces. No, no, no. Go back to that second one you said. <laughs> Monogram towels? <laughs> mm, before that. <laughs> so tapestries were typically not made in England, but Henry VIII was so into them that around Shakespeare's time, they started being made again. And there is a book about it 
And it was really annoying because I just wanted to find out information about these tapestries. But every time I typed in that word with anything to, to do with Henry VIII or Elizabeth I or the Tudors, I got a book called Henry VIII and the Art of Magistry, Tapestries and the Tudor Court. <laughs> So there's a whole book about there's it. There's a whole book about it. <laughs> and it's because 95% of his collection has been destroyed or lost. Jeez. Oh. Yeah. So Those were collector items too. They were they were vintage, <laughs> man. Vintage. There was no foxing around the edges. <laughs> so upsetting. If this had a grading, this would be like easily a 9. <laughs> 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 so, um Henry VIII loved his tapestry. So, guys, just so you understand how intricate these things were and why they were so expensive, they were handwoven. Yeah, and these were intricately. Were, what was about the average size of them? They dif- they differed. Okay. But imagine. But I usually visualize just blankets hanging on a wall. Pretty much, <laughs> just picture like a blanket, like a not a baby blanket, like a big blanket, hanging on a wall. And, like, you could get a tapestry these days, but they're printed, and you can buy one on Amazon for 10 bucks. Yep. This is not that. Um, you, they are, a lot of them are still on display, including the Meeting of Abraham. That is still... You can actually go to... That's cool. That one's actually survived. Yeah, you can go to Whitehall. Pa- uh, shit, I want to say it was Whitehall, but I don't think Whitehall exists anymore. Uh, the Meeting... It's one of the W Palaces of Abraham. The Lincoln Memorial. It's at the Lincoln <laughs> Memorial. Oh, my God. It's at some fucking palace in England. Look, none of you are going to go there, so you don't care. Uh, I think half of our listeners live in England. I don't think half. I think you're overestimating it. Um, the meeting. Let us know if you live in England. Well, yeah, the girl I called out earlier, she does. I see a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I'm from there. And I'm like, oh, we're internationally known. It is pretty cool. It is. Um, On my last podcast, I was excited that we had a listener from Canada. <laughs> Wasn't he like a guest host with you guys? He was. I love him you were so, so much. Excited. He's, he's a great dude. You were so excited about <laughs> your Canadian that you invited him. Hampton Court Palace. That's not a W. Hampton Court Palace. Whampton Court. Whampton Court. Court. Whampton. (laughs) Wham. Um, Okay, so that's pretty much it for art. Now let's chat music. Mm-hmm, 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 that song that you're terribly mm-hmm, humming mm-hmm. What has child been is this who laid to rest? Garrett, that song has been credited as written by Henry VIII. Yeah, I know. We talked about that a long time ago. But it's not really written but by I was singing. I was singing the Christmas one, the, the, the Jesus one. Oh, I, I know that one. Totally. You, um, you, don't, you do know that one. Okay. Sure, what child is this? So... The rumor is that Green Sleeves was written for Anne Boleyn by Henry VIII, but that came out at the end of Henry VIII's life, so it's very unlikely that on his deathbed he was like, I've been inspired, and started Rosebud. and started jamming. <laughs> Green um, Sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> but music was incredibly important in that time period. Um, it was basically the soundtrack to everything. <laughs> like Edgar Wright was probably like, damn, that's a lot of music. <laughs> so um, it was it was important to have it th- basically everywhere. It, they, uh, courtiers were taught um, playing, singing, and dancing as children. It was like essential in education, and that's part of why Henry VIII probably didn't like Aunt, uh, Anne of Cleves was because in Germany they didn't have no shit about music. They were drunk all the time. They were drunk all the time. <laughs> so that's yeah. So he was probably like, Maybe God true. damn it, she's so boring, and she doesn't know any music. So, <laughs> like, I tried to... I made her a mixtape and everything. She just she just threw it away. I tried introducing her to some classic rock, and she just kept trying to bring me to, back to Justin Bieber. And I was like, please stop, woman. She wouldn't stop listening to David Hasselhoff. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> what is wrong with that? That was awesome. Nothing me. Henry had the problem. Um... <laughs> So music was a vital part of church. It was any sort of announcement. It was any sort of 
anything. Like, if there was anything going on, music was involved. Um, was so so Emily? You and I went to church a lot as children. Yes. Was this when a lot of those those uh, songs sung in mass were made, uh, or, or is that is that tough to I say? I don't think they were made back then, but like, I think that's a tradition. Maybe maybe had the roots in that's them. That's just like not going to ever go away for Catholicism, and that's probably part of why music was so important is because Catholicism was a, a fact of life back then. Until Henry mm-hmm. VIII was like, "I want to divorce, fuck Catholicism." I I want to know how many. How many of the songs we sit, we used to have to sing in church are are from that era, will if any? Raise you up on eagle's wings. That definitely is not. Bear you, Bear you on the breath, the breath of dawn. Make you to shine like the sun. No, but I bet you like Ave Maria. Like it was probably no those you guys Latin are singing. songs. <laughs> That's I, because you're an unholy. The one that Emily was singing, I remember kids would mess around and they'd have their own like little like pantomime that they'd do the song. And when they say bear you on the breath of dawn, they would do like little bear claws. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. That's probably why kids don't know the difference. Anybody doesn't know the difference between bear arms and bear arms. Uh, <laughs> did you ever learn back to hold on back to pantomime and Catholic songs? Did you ever learn the Father Abraham song? Yeah, Father Abraham. He had many sons, and many, many sons, sons had Father, Father Abraham. Abraham. I'm, I'm one, one of them, them. So and are so are you. So that's all Me too. Lord. I always threw that in there. <laughs> stand up, sit down, turn around. Wait, nope. Stand up, turn around, sit down. I got that backwards. Anyway, that was your Catholic room memories, Catholic corner. Um, Gare, probably all the Latin songs we sang. Okay. Those were probably around, but I don't think like Eagle's Wings or the Bread of Life. Oh no, no, not those, not at all. Okay. Those are those are too cheesy. <laughs> those had to have been done in like the seventies and eighties. They 80s. totally were. <laughs> it was written um, by the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, Renaissance musicians, there were professionals, of course. Um, So, Led Zeppelin would sometimes pop out. (laughs) Um, No, but there were loud instruments, like the trumpet, and then there were the soft instruments, like the hurdy-gurdy. Hurdy-gurdy. It was... We're back to that, motherfucker. We're always going to come back to that hurdy-gurdy. So, those were the the soft instruments, instruments, the ones that can be background noise and like John Williams type music where you don't need to be paying attention to, but it's really nice to have in the background. Um, Mm -hmm. Those were like the important of the professional musicians. So like the monarchs would have those soft musicians in their rooms playing songs for them. How, how did you become a professional musician? Was it something you just like practice as a peasant no, when you were bored and then they're like, Hey, you're good. You're coming to court. It was very, or were they like raised from youth to, it was likely through the church. Okay. Apprenticeship. Um, what? Would it be like apprenticeship? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, like family stuff. Yeah. But I don't think. I mean, I bet you it was harder to become a professional musician back then than it was even today. Mm-hmm. Like, there's probably some asshole out there who thinks he's going to be the next Dave Grohl, who's actually going to be the next Dave Grohl. But back then, like the next, the kids weren't like, "I want to be Thomas." There Tellis. will and never I expect that to happen. ever be another Dave Grohl. No, he's a treasure. He really I is. Love Dave Grohl, Dave, if you're listening, ever tell you that that like I think everybody I worked with at my old job hated Foo Fighters. I don't. I don't get it. Like, Foo Fighters aren't like an amazing, they, like super like awesome Nirvana? band, but like they're it's it's like popcorn. Did those people like Nirvana? No, but one of them really liked Arcade Fire. Oh, Gary, you can't expect somebody who loves Arcade Fire to also be okay with Foo Fighters. Yeah. Like, unless they're a person who likes Arcade Fire, but also Foo Fighters, but also Rolling Stones. Like, they just like music. You know? No, no, it was nothing like that at all. Okay. Like, I don't, I don't get, I don't get how you can hate the Foo Fighters. I can understand how you're like, uh, they're all they right. They just don't do it for me. But you can't hate them, like. It's not the Smashing Pumpkins. 
Hey, I like Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, today, I already talked about this with her today. It's okay. What would you say, Jeff? <laughs> oh, I, I, I know Jeff's hate for Billy Corgan. Yeah, I love their music. <laughs> I just don't like the singer. It's just so whiny. But Ugh. either way, back to back Tudor to, music. <laughs> back to Henry VIII and his <laughs> green sleeves. Um, so Henry VIII was super, super, super talented. Like, all of the royals and the monarchs were educated in music. Like, Anne Boleyn was a really great dancer. Um, <laughs> why is that funny? I wouldn't imagine she invented twerking. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why would I she don't put know. that just, out just there? Like, she's an amazing dancer. Like, she'd just get out on the dance floor and just, like, Henry, just, I- like... Dance real dirty. Come on, Henry, I want to dance. I just want to dance. <laughs> um, so super into. Also, speaking of dirty dancing, I would imagine that that was what they did. They did the whole. Yes. I have the time of my life. That's and Henry how lifts they her met. up above his head, and that was their first meeting. That was their song during the. Uh... Oh my god! Nobody puts Bolin in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> That's this episode's title. There's a lot of them. Um, so Henry VIII played a mo- so ev- like they all- some of them played the virginals, which was like a like a harpsichord, um, things like that. But they didn't play as many as Henry VIII because he played the lute, the organ, the fucking keyboards, which I'm totally imagining Henry just like rocking out on keyboards. He's got a keytar. <laughs> He's got a keytar. He's playing Rush on it. So. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> he also played Fun fact, Henry VIII wrote Tom Sawyer. <laughs> Not the book, the song. The song. You know what? Fuck it. He wrote the book too. <laughs> he also played the flute, the harp, and he was a singer. So he is getting Is this is this all is this all true or is no, this, this just is bullshit true. made up about this Henry? This is all true, and he also owned um lutes, flutes. Bagpipes and recorders, and I really now I'm picturing that episode of Friends where Ross is trying to play the bagpipe, but it's Henry VIII. Sure. I would imagine Henry writing green sleeves on a recorder and everyone having to deal with that fucking nonsense <laughs> for like a week. We were watching Wolf Hall the other day, and there was a scene where a little kid was playing the recorder obnoxiously while staring out an open window. Like, nobody in the fucking courtyard wants to hear that shit. And I realized that kids have been taught that fucking useless piece of shit instrument for centuries because I I, had to learn hot cross buns on that thing. Mercifully, we skipped that in school, but we didn't have any other music program. You skipped the recorder? You can't yeah. be human without that. Like, I just thought it was a thing everybody learned. My my brother did it, but I didn't. I didn't get it. <laughs> well, Garrett's not human. Our music program sucked. Uh, like a bunch of kids staged like type. a boycott of our music program in grade school because all we did was sing baby songs we've been singing since first grade. Garrett, you also didn't learn to type, so your whole school sucked. It really did. Um, okay, so Elizabeth was also very into playing music. Um, she was especially skilled at playing the virginals, which were like the key, uh, harpsichord type instrument. <coughs> and apparently a guy from the um, Scottish court was visiting, and he mentioned how Mary, Queen of Scots, played the virginals. And Elizabeth was like, oh, does she play better than me? And he <laughs> goes, oh, she plays fairly well. And she's like, okay, okay. So then later, like, the ambassador or somebody grabbed the Scottish guy and he took him down a gallery and they heard somebody playing beautiful harpsichordal music. And he goes, oh, this is stunning music. I love it. And then Elizabeth was like, oh, my, I didn't realize you'd hear me playing. But since you heard, am I better than Mary, Queen of Scots? And he goes, yeah. Oh, man, can I have sweet harpsichord battles? (laughs) No, but Henry VIII had rap battles. Oh. Okay, so I, I saved this for the last, and that was just the perfect segue. Oh, man, she's getting really excited about this one. Oh, wait, this is real. This is okay. fucking real. See, see, I was talking about the harpsichord core battle, because I was just visualizing like that like that thing from Rufy and Roger Rabbit <laughs> with Daffy and Donald, where they're doing the piano duels to each other. Very likely. I not. was imagining like a devil went down to Georgia thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, no. So, before Henry VIII had Wolsey... Um, uh, arrested for treason and tried to kill him, but then Wolsey unfortunately died from endless shitting. Um, they were buddies, 
and each of them had their their choirs and they would apparently have a playful argument over whose was better and it actually got to the point where they had like a fucking rap battle with their choirs (laughs) so henry the eighth actually told wolsey he won but then wolsey was like fuck i hate it when i win against him because then he holds it against me here's my best choir boy <laughs> but like i'm totally imagining old school rap battle especially the henry the Coast stage like yeah uh-huh mm. <laughs> all right my name is hank oh i'm so white <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for today beautiful did, was was there any uh, sculptures or I, we Nothing didn't she cares really about that. talk like, about was architecture there or anything other like that? Forms, or? Like, yeah, sculptures uh, at all done back then? I mean, architecture? The David is based off of Henry. Okay, yes. I'm going to say yes. Like, we um, talk about buildings like castles the, and whatnot. But, but, but the sculptures were done on buildings. Like, uh, okay. they were attached to the buildings. Okay. Wow, I can't spell. Um. I'm, yes. yes. Mm, there were apparently, but I can't. Like I, I'm pretty sure most of them were just um, elements that belonged on architecture. So like monuments, those were technically sculptures, okay. but they were made for a purpose. You know. Um, I got a question. I got. A made-up answer. I hope not. Um, so, a lot of times in entertainment and media, you see like like kings or like like brave warriors who who have specially made like armor or weapons. And w- was there any stuff like that, like 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 weapons or armor pieces that may not have actually had use, but like they were they were like works of art specifically for a certain person? Henry the Eighth. Uh, yeah. Have you seen Henry VIII's armor? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so like... I saw the picture of one of our fans sent to us. Also the picture that my, my awesome college roommate sent me when she went there. So the armor would have been useful, but some armor was made... More just for ceremonial? For jousts or oh. ceremonies or things like that. So... Um, God, this like looks really freaky when it's just standing on its own. Um, oh, that is pretty cool looking. It even has a cod piece. Um, yes, there was armor, but and the but they probably had like beautiful armor made for jousting and whatnot, and less so for okay. the battles. So, yes. Well, all right. Anything else? No, I think that's that's about it. Um, <clears throat> okay, guys, check us out on Facebook at Tudor Hardly Know Her. I have one fan who is asking me a question right now, so maybe I'll just answer it on air. Hey, uh, it's about books. Taylor asked if I've tried Kindle Unlimited. Mm-hmm. What? Groupon has a sixty-day free trial on there, and they're. We said no ads, and I'm totally doing one. <laughs> uh, but she's recommending Tudor books. So, oh, there's one about Jane Boleyn. Okay. You're my new best friend, Taylor. Thank you. I'm checking that out because I have, like, a month of reading ahead of me. So, um, thanks, Taylor. You are awesome. Um, and that's also how the awesome Abby Gillingham found us was through Facebook. So just check our Facebook page, Tudor. I hardly know her. We're also on Twitter. Our um, handle is just Tudor know her. Um, I share facts about Tudor history, answer questions, things like that. Um, share thoughts on any like Tudor shows I might be watching, things like that. And as always, rate and review us. It has been super awesome to see so many lately. We are really thrilled with those. And it's just kind of cool to hear more about people enjoying our our, our little podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it. Thanks for that contribution, mm, Garrett. Do it. <laughs> um, uh, send us episode suggestions if you have any. 
we're happy to happy to listen oh my god and i think that's that's it Woo! cool all right yeah so until next time until next time until next time divorce divorce beheaded, beheaded died, died. divorce beheaded, beheaded survived, survived. Goodbye. goodbye goodbye henry the eighth wrote what's that song goodbye my lover goodbye my friend he wrote that for Anne Boleyn.